The Lincoln Memorial is an American national monument built to honor the 16th President of the United States, Abraham Lincoln. It is located on the western end of the National Mall in Washington, D.C., across from the Washington Monument. The architect was Henry Bacon, the designer of the primary statue, Abraham Lincoln, 1920 was Daniel Chester French, the Lincoln statue was carved by the Piccarilli brothers, and the painter of the interior murals was Jules Gayra. Dedicated in 1922, it is one of several monuments built to honor an American president. It has always been a major tourist attraction and since the 1930s has been a symbolic center focused on race relations. The building is in the form of a Greek Doric temple and contains a large seated sculpture of Abraham Lincoln and inscriptions of two well-known speeches by Lincoln, the Gettysburg Address, and his second inaugural address. The memorial has been the site of many famous speeches, including Martin Luther King Jr.'s, I Have a Dream, speech, delivered on August 28, 1963, during the rally at the end of the March on Washington for Jobs and Freedom. Like other monuments on the National Mall, including the nearby Vietnam Veterans Memorial, Korean War Veterans Memorial, and National World War II Memorial, the memorial is administered by the National Park Service under its National Mall and Memorial Parks Group. It has been listed on the National Register of Historic Places since October 15, 1966. It is open to the public 24 hours a day. In 2007, it was ranked 7th on the list of America's favorite architecture by the American Institute of Architects. Since 2010, approximately 6 million people visit the memorial annually. History The first public memorial to Abraham Lincoln in Washington, D.C., was a statue by Lot Flannery erected in front of the District of Columbia City Hall in 1868, three years after the Lincoln's assassination. Demands for a fitting national memorial had been voiced since the time of Lincoln's death. In 1867, Congress passed the first of many bills incorporating a commission to erect a monument for the 16th president. An American sculptor, Clark Mills, was chosen to design the monument. His plans reflected the nationalistic spirit of the time, and called for a 70-foot structure adorned with six equestrian and 31 pedestrian statues of colossal proportions, crowned by a 12-foot statue of Abraham Lincoln. Subscriptions for the project were insufficient, the matter lay dormant until the start of the 20th century, when, under the leadership of Senator Shelby M. Cullum of Illinois, six separate bills were introduced in Congress for the incorporation of a new memorial commission. The first five bills, proposed in the years 1901, 1902, and 1908, met with defeat because of opposition from Speaker Joe Cannon. The sixth bill, Senate Bill 9449, introduced on December 13, 1910, passed. The Lincoln Memorial Commission had its first meeting the following year and U.S. President William H. Taft was chosen as the commission's president. Progress continued at a steady pace and by 1913 Congress had approved of the Commission's choice of design and location. There were questions regarding the Commission's plan. Many thought that architect Henry Bacon's Greek temple design was far too ostentatious for a man of Lincoln's humble character. Instead they proposed a simple log cabin shrine. The site too did not go unopposed. The recently reclaimed land in West Potomac Park was seen by many to be either too swampy or too inaccessible. Other sites, such as Union Station, were put forth. The Commission stood firm in its recommendation, feeling that the Potomac Park location, situated on the Washington Monument Capital Axis, overlooking the Potomac River and surrounded by open land, was ideal. Furthermore, the Potomac Park site had already been designated in the Macmillan Plan of 1901 to be the location of a future monument comparable to that of the Washington Monument, with congressional approval and a $300,000 allocation, the project got underway. On February 12, 1914, a dedication ceremony was conducted and the following month the actual construction began. Work progressed steadily according to schedule. Some changes were made to the plan. The statue of Lincoln, originally designed to be 10 feet meters tall, was enlarged to 19 feet meters to prevent it from being overwhelmed by the huge chamber. As late as 1920, the decision was made to substitute an open portal for the bronze and glass grill which was to have guarded the entrance. Despite these changes, the memorial was finished on schedule. 
Commission President William H. Taft, who was then Chief Justice of the United States, dedicated the memorial on May 30, 1922 and presented it to President Warren G. Harding, who accepted it on behalf of the American people. Lincoln's only surviving son, 78 year old Robert Todd Lincoln, was in attendance. The memorial was listed on the National Register of Historic Places on October 15, 1966. Topic: Exterior. The exterior of the memorial echoes a classic Greek temple and features Yule marble from Colorado. The structure measures 189.7 by 118.5 feet (57.8 by 36.1 meters) and is 99 feet (30 meters) tall. It is surrounded by a peristyle of 36 fluted Doric columns, one for each of the 36 states in the Union at the time of Lincoln's death, and two columns in Antis at the entrance behind the colonnade. The columns stand 44 feet 13 meters tall with a base diameter of 7.5 feet 2.3 meters. Each column is built from 12 drums including the capital. The columns, like the exterior walls and facades, are inclined slightly toward the building's interior. This is to compensate for perspective distortions which would otherwise make the memorial appear to bulge out at the top when compared with the bottom, a common feature of ancient Greek architecture. Above the colonnade, inscribed on the frieze, are the names of the 36 states in the Union at the time of Lincoln's death and the dates in which they entered the Union. Their names are separated by double wreath medallions in bas-relief. The cornice is composed of a carved scroll regularly interspersed with projecting lion's heads and ornamented with palmetto cresting along the upper edge. Above this on the attic frieze are inscribed the names of the 48 states present at the time of the memorial's dedication. A bit higher is a garland joined by ribbons and palm leaves, supported by the wings of eagles. All ornamentation on the friezes and cornices was done by Ernest C. Berstow. The memorial is anchored in a concrete foundation, 44 to 66 feet (13 to 20 meters) in depth, constructed by M. F. Comer and Company and the National Foundation and Engineering Company, and is encompassed by a 187 by 257 foot (57 by 78 meters) rectangular granite retaining wall measuring 14 feet (4.3 meters) in height. Leading up to the shrine on the east side are the main steps. Beginning at the edge of the reflecting pool, the steps rise to the Lincoln Memorial Circle roadway surrounding the edifice, then to the main portal, intermittently spaced with a series of platforms. Flanking the steps as they approach the entrance are two buttresses each crowned with an 11-foot tall tripod carved from pink Tennessee marble by the Piccarilli brothers. Interior The memorial's interior is divided into three chambers by two rows of four ionic columns, each 50 feet 15 meters tall and 5.5 feet meters across at their base. The central chamber, housing the statue of Lincoln, is 60 feet wide, 74 feet deep, and 60 feet high. The north and south chambers display carved inscriptions of Lincoln's second inaugural address and his Gettysburg address. Bordering these inscriptions are pilasters ornamented with fasces, eagles, and wreaths. The inscriptions and adjoining ornamentation are by Evelyn Beatrice Longman. The memorial is replete with symbolic elements. The 36 columns represent the states of the Union at the time of Lincoln's death, the 48 stone festoons above the columns represent the 48 states in 1922. Inside, each inscription is surmounted by a 60 by 12 foot (18.3 by 3.7 meters) mural by Jules Guerra, portraying principles seen as evident in Lincoln's life: freedom, liberty, immortality, justice, and the law on the south wall; unity, fraternity, and charity on the north. Cypress trees, representing eternity, are in the mural's backgrounds. The mural's paint incorporated kerosene and wax to protect the exposed artwork from fluctuations in temperature and moisture. The ceiling consists of bronze girders ornamented with laurel and oak leaves. Between these are panels of Alabama marble, saturated with paraffin to increase translucency. But feeling that the statue required even more light, Bacon and French designed metal slats for the ceiling to conceal floodlights, which could be modulated to supplement the natural light. This modification was installed in 1929. The one major alteration since was the addition of a handicapped elevator in the 1970s. Topic: 
Statue Lying between the north and south chambers is the central hall containing the solitary figure of Lincoln sitting in contemplation. The statue was carved by the Piccarilli brothers under the supervision of the sculptor, Daniel Chester French, and took four years to complete. The statue, originally intended to be only 10 feet meters tall, was, on further consideration, enlarged so that it finally stood 19 feet meters tall from head to foot, the scale being such that if Lincoln were standing, he would be 28 feet meters tall. The widest span of the statue corresponds to its height. Of Georgia white marble, it weighs 175 short tons t and was shipped in 28 pieces. The statue rests upon an oblong pedestal of Tennessee marble 10 feet meters high, 16 feet meters wide, and 17 feet meters deep. Directly beneath this lies a platform of Tennessee marble about 34.5 feet .5 meters long, 28 feet .5 meters wide, and 6.5 inches .17 meters high. Lincoln's arms rest on representations of Roman fasces, a subtle touch that associates the statue with the Augustan and imperial theme obelisk and funerary monuments of the Washington Mall. The statue is discreetly bordered by two pilasters, one on each side. Between these pilasters, and above Lincoln's head, is engraved an epitaph of Lincoln by royal courtesans. Sculptural features The sculpture has been at the center of two urban legends. Some have claimed that the face of General Robert E. Lee was carved onto the back of Lincoln's head, and looks back across the Potomac toward his former home, Arlington House, now within the bounds of Arlington National Cemetery. Another popular legend is that Lincoln is shown using sign language to represent his initials, with his left hand shaped to form an A, and his right hand to form an L, the president's initials. The National Park Service denies both legends, however, historian Gerald Prokopovich writes that, while it is not clear that sculptor Daniel Chester French intended Lincoln's hands to be formed into sign language versions of his initials, it is possible that French did intend it, because he was familiar with American Sign Language, and he would have had a reason to do so, that is, to pay tribute to Lincoln for having signed the federal legislation giving Gallaudet University, a university for the deaf, the authority to grant college degrees. The National Geographic Society's publication, Pinpointing the Past in Washington, D.C., states that Daniel Chester French had a son who was deaf and that the sculptor was familiar with sign language. Historian James A. Percoco has observed that, although there are no extant documents showing that French had Lincoln's hands carved to represent the letters A and L in American Sign Language, I think you can conclude that it's reasonable to have that kind of summation about the hands. Sacred space As Sandage demonstrates, the memorial has become a symbolically sacred venue especially for the civil rights movement. In 1939, the Daughters of the American Revolution refused to allow the African-American contralto Marian Anderson to perform before an integrated audience at the organization's Constitution Hall. At the suggestion of Eleanor Roosevelt, the wife of President Franklin D. Roosevelt, Harold L. Ix, the Secretary of the Interior, arranged for a performance on the steps of the Lincoln Memorial on Easter Sunday of that year, to a live audience of 75,000, and a nationwide radio audience. On August 28, 1963, the memorial grounds were the site of the March on Washington for Jobs and Freedom, which proved to be a high point of the American Civil Rights Movement. It is estimated that approximately 250,000 people came to the event, where they heard Martin Luther King Jr. deliver his historic I Have a Dream speech before the memorial honoring the president who had issued the Emancipation Proclamation 100 years earlier. King's speech, with its language of patriotism and its evocation of Lincoln's Gettysburg Address, was meant to match the symbolism of the Lincoln Memorial as a monument to national unity. The D.C. police also appreciated the location because it was surrounded on three sides by water, so that any incident could be easily contained. Twenty years later, on August 28, 1983, crowds gathered again to mark the 20th anniversary mobilization for jobs, peace and freedom, to reflect on progress in gaining civil rights for African Americans and to commit to correcting continuing injustices. 
King's speech is such a part of the Lincoln Memorial story, that the spot on which King stood, on the landing 18 steps below Lincoln's statue, was engraved in 2003 in recognition of the 40th anniversary of the event. At the memorial on May 9, 1970, President Richard Nixon had a middle of the night impromptu, brief meeting with protesters who, just days after the Kent State shootings, were preparing to march against the Vietnam War. Vandalism In September 1962, vandals painted the words, "'Nigger Lover' in foot-high pink letters on the rear wall. On the morning of July 26, 2013, the memorial was shut down after the statue's base and legs were splashed with green paint. It reopened later that day. A 58-year-old Chinese national, Jiamie Tian, was later found responsible for the vandalism. Following her arrest at the Washington National Cathedral, she was admitted to St. Elizabeth's Hospital, a psychiatric facility, and was later found to be incompetent to stand trial. She has since been released from the hospital. On February 27, 2017, graffiti written in permanent marker was found at the memorial, the Washington Monument, the District of Columbia War Memorial, and the National World War II Memorial, saying, Jackie shot JFK. Blood test is a lie as well as other claims. Street signs and utility boxes were also defaced. Authorities believed that a single person was responsible for all the vandalism. On August 15, 2017, graffiti that Reuters reported appeared to read Thuck Law was spray-painted in red on one of the columns. The initials M plus E were etched on the same pillar. A mild, gel-type architectural paint stripper was used to remove the paint without damaging the memorial. However, the etching was deemed permanent damage. A Smithsonian Institution directional sign several blocks away was also defaced. On September 18, 2017, Nurtilak Bakiyev from Kyrgyzstan was arrested when a police officer saw him vandalizing the memorial at around 1 p.m. Eastern Daylight Saving Time. Bakiyev used a penny to carve the letters H-Y-P-T-M-A-E-K in what appeared to Cyrillic letters into the fifth pillar on the north side. As of 20 September 2017, police do not know what the words mean, although there is a possibility that they contain a reference to the vandal's name. Court documents indicate that the letters cannot be completely removed, but could be polished at the cost of approximately $2,000. A conservator for the National Park Service said that the stone would weather over time, helping to obscure the letters, although she characterized it as permanent damage. In popular culture As one of the most prominent American monuments, the Lincoln Memorial is often featured in books, films, and television shows that take place in Washington. By 2003, it had appeared in over 60 films, and in 2009, Mark S. Reinhardt compiled some short sketches of dozens of uses of the memorial in film and television. Some examples of films include Mr. Smith Goes to Washington, in a key scene where the statue and its inscription provide inspiration to freshman Senator Jefferson Smith, played by James Stewart. The Park Service did not not want director Frank Capra to film at the memorial, so he sent a large crew elsewhere as a distraction while a smaller crew filmed Stuart and Gene Arthur at the memorial. The Day the Earth Stood Still, a science fiction film in which the alien Klaatu visits the memorial and is impressed by Lincoln's words carved there, the 2001 version of Planet of the Apes, X-Men, First Class, the 2011 film Transformers, Dark of the Moon, where Megatron destroys the statue of Lincoln and then sits on the chair as a throne, and the 2016 horror movie The Purge. Purge, election year, in which the Lincoln Memorial is shown with dead and burning bodies on the steps and the columns defaced with giant letters that spell out, Purge, written in human blood. Other films and television programs which have featured the memorial include In the Line of Fire, National Treasure, in which the main characters discuss the possibility of stealing the Declaration of Independence while sitting on the steps of the memorial, the comedy Night at the Museum, Battle of the Smithsonian, where the statue of Lincoln helps defeat the Horus Warriors, the Mr. Lisa Goes to Washington episode of The Simpsons, the scene from Forrest Gump, in which Forrest Tom Hanks delivers a speech standing on a podium in front of the memorial facing the reflecting pool, and the 2013 film White House Down, in which the president Jamie Foxx requests a flyby of the Lincoln Memorial, at both the beginning and the end of the movie to pay homage to his hero. Many of the appearances of the Lincoln Memorial are actually digital visual effects, due to restrictive filming rules. 
As of 2017, according to the National Park Service, "...filming, photography is prohibited above the white marble steps and the interior chamber of the Lincoln Memorial." Mitchell Newton Matza argued in 2016. Reflecting its cherished place in the hearts of Americans, the Lincoln Memorial has often been featured prominently in popular culture, especially motion pictures." According to Tracy Gold Bennett, "...the majesty of the Lincoln Memorial is a big draw for film location scouts, producers, and directors because this landmark has appeared in a considerable number of films." Jay Soccer writes, from high to low, the memorial is cultural shorthand for both American ideals and 1960s radicalism. From Forrest Gump's Zelig-like insertion into anti-war rallies on the steps of the memorial, to the villainous Decepticon robots discarding the Lincoln statue and claiming it as a throne. The memorial's place in the culture is assured even as it is parodied. Topic: <laughs> Depictions on US currency. From 1959, the 150th anniversary of Lincoln's birth to 2008, the memorial, with statue visible through the columns, was depicted on the reverse of the United States one-cent coin, which since 1909 has depicted a bust of Lincoln on its front. The memorial has appeared on the back of the US $5 bill since 1929. The front of the bill bears Lincoln's portrait. Topic: See also Washington, D.C. Portal NRHP Portal List of areas in the United States National Park System National Register of Historic Places listings in the District of Columbia